Hi, Mike and Arlen, our Philippine journey. Welcome back. Hey, when is it time for you to move on in your Philippine relationship? We know we're going to get a lot of shit for this. We know we're going to have different opinions. We welcome all of them. Okay? We're not going to tell you how to run your life, but we're going to give you some ideas for thought. A few things you should probably keep in mind, at least consider. So, with that being said, let's talk about it. I never got it what you had to go. I guess this world's too slow for you. I think there's beauty in the gray, the cold, but you just want the gold. And there's no way I can beat it, cause I got no chance, no chance when it comes to her. She got the glitter and the fame, and I, I just wasn't enough. Hey, it's really great that you could join us. And uh, I would like to say and give thanks to all of you, to all of our subscribers, and to all the viewers that don't subscribe, that just catch these as they come and go. Thank you so very much. I'd also like to put in a shameless plug that says, if you've got a few minutes, please do hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up so we push this out. And finally, hit that notify bell so you'll know when we put out our next video if you want, if not. Okay, let's talk about the subject matter. The subject matter here is, when is it time for you to move on? And in looking at that, um, many of you will, will not agree, but at the same time, you can't deny certain facts. There are a lot of expat Filipino relationships that literally were formed by long distance relationships. And you know what? Actually, a lot of those work out quite well, but some do not. Just like in the US, some do not. All right. And I want to say one thing that's real important. If you have children here in the Philippines, moving on does not mean abandoning your responsibility to not only support but participate as a full-time parent as much as possible in raising them. You have a moral obligation, and I'm going to say no more other than that. Now, let's say you don't have kids. Let's say it's a little bit of a simpler situation. When's it time for you to move on? Well, the easiest way, the best way, the simplest way, the most basic layman's terms, it's time to move on when you're not happy. Before you get criticized, wait, just wait, okay? You didn't spend all your years, most of you will have been all your lives up until recently, within the past couple of years probably, preparing to retire the best that you could. And I don't mean, you know what, you prepare to retire as a multimillionaire, you repair, you know, and what I mean is, is you did the best you could to retire to, you know, and you've gotten to the point where you just can't take it anymore. It's time for you to retire. Retirement should not be about less than or being miserable. And when I say less than, I'm not talking about materialistic things, okay? There are people that retire on very frugal uh, budgets. Great, all right? If they're happy, they're happy. But what about those people that retire and even at any financial stage are miserable? Or not even miserable, but just unhappy okay when your spouse partner wife whatever boyfriend all right um either one when they spend more time on the phone in their little chat groups and facebooks and everything else than they spend with you planning the future 
that's a sure sign that things are not the way they should be. Now, I didn't say that was their fault. Could be you're about as interesting as mud on an old Alabama tire. Okay? I can't give you those kind of answers, but you're not happy. And if you're not happy, odds are she's not happy or your partner's not happy. It's time to move on. Okay? I can't stress enough. You know, we see couples that are elderly. And when I say elderly, look at me, okay? Um, elderly. We see couples in their 60s and 70s, and they are incredibly happy together. They've grown into that. They've grown to be together. They've grown into each other. They read each other like a book, and they participate in each other's lives. Okay? Great. Those, th those are great things. But we see younger couples, couples where the age gap relationship is tremendous, and it's difficult, but that doesn't mean it won't work. It just means it requires more work, and it requires work on both sides of the coin. All right? No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So the first thing is, is it's time to move on if you're not happy. Now, don't get me wrong. There's room for blame in a failed relationship on both sides. It, you know, nobody is perfect by any way, shape, or means. But if you've gotten to the point where your interests don't match, your activities don't match, where what you want to do in life and the rest of your life, the remaining years of your life, doesn't match her, okay? Then it's time to move on. You, you know, a lot of guys will argue, no, you know what, I, I got to get another girlfriend, I'm going to have to go date, I got to do this. Big deal, what else have you got to do? You're retired. Is your life so fucking busy being retired that you can't try and improve it? Move on. Don't live the rest of your life unhappy. Just don't do it. Now, I'm not saying be a dick about it, okay? Don't do that. Don't be one of those kind of guys. Be an adult about it, all right? You've got to help her to help you. And helping you means her leaving and you moving on, all right? That means, you know what? It's got to be... A, a mutual position. You've got to try and make it work to begin with. You've got to have discussions. But when it ends and it just doesn't work, how many times are you going to try? How often are you going to try? All right. Are, how many times are you going to have that conversation that says, honey, I need you to be this way, this way, this way, this way. All right. And they say, sure. Um, okay. You know what I say about that? So Alfred Einstein has a very famous quote, and it is the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results, all right? And, and that really means that it's recognizing the fault in continuing behavior if your desire of change is the course, you want to change your course, you can't have that continued behavior. So sometimes this problem is just as much yours as it is hers. Now, I'm going to go into the last part, and this is kind of like the most nasty part. When's the time? It's time to move on when your lies catch up to you. And that's what we see happen more often. Okay, some guy meets a girl and he will just embellish everything. He'll embellish, oh, I'm a triathlon runner. I'm a, a wealthy man. I have 
this, I want that, I want this, just blah, 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 blah. It never fucking ends, okay? When those lies catch up, that makes them unhappy, which then in turn makes you unhappy, which then in turn makes for a miserable relationship. It's time to move on and learn your damn lesson. Your lesson is don't repeat that. It's insanity. Repeating it is the, just Albert Einstein's pure definition. It's insanity. Now, be reasonable about it. Be upfront, but be firm. Okay? And I'm not saying you should provide support. I'm not saying you should do this or you should do that. These are all individual things that have individual applications. Some apply, some don't apply, whatever. My point is, when it's time to move on, it's time to move on. And then, be a man and make your next choice much wiser. You've learned a lesson, moved on. Learn it. And then move on. Apply it. Apply what you've learned. You didn't work this long your entire life to be miserable. Tell us what you think in the comments below. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great day.